Good morning, folks. Got a lot to cover today. We're going to start at our star, and although things are still calm indeed, we've got incoming elements to watch for. Sunspots, coronal hole, plasma filaments. And speaking of plasma filaments, down south, we've got one set to face Earth tomorrow, and another one dancing in over the limb now, standing tall above the surface. Next, we're coming to spaceweathernews.com to find that solar flaring remains very low, but the Earth-facing solar quiet will be tested here, not so much by the departing spots, but by the new guys incoming. This type of sunspot would be popping M and X flares under normal solar conditions, so let's see if the Earth can shut them down. On the solar wind telemetry, you can see that the impact is waning now. Speed never even cracked 600 kilometers per second, and we never took anything beyond that one magnetic storm event. Well, we've got no planetary geometries proliferative of seismicity at the moment, and even though we've got coronal holes coming in, they are predominantly blocked by the magnetic fields arching through the corona. And therefore, when we gauge seismicity during these times, we should expect normal locations to shake, but at lower magnitudes. Top quake of the whole last day was only listed at 5.5. .5. Yesterday evening, we posted a little OLR note on Twitter. The map was all over the place, sad face, but the strongest anomalies were near Central and South America. You can see the positive anomaly next to the negative anomaly there. In moments after that Twitter post, I had emails asking what I meant by all over the place. Well, the goal is only to ever call one area, but... Similar OLR signals could also be seen near Japan and to the south in the waters east of China, and technically the Americas were actually anomalous up to Mexico. Well, the largest quake of that last day happened just a few hours after the Twitter posts, right in the strongest anomaly in the eastern half of the world. This is actually a downgrade as we have two human seismologists confirming 6.0. Let's also note that the Earth spot in focus from yesterday is also heading right up to that area. Also had Sinabung begin erupting again this week, always an important one for the surrounding regions. Top news today includes an article from back in August that we just saw yesterday, how the equatorial electrojet actually means low latitudes have major solar storm concerns, just like high latitudes. Also got a release from the NRAO about a tiny dwarf star, almost too small to be a star, but which is a magnetic powerhouse with near constant flaring, thousands of times stronger than our sun delivers. Imagine X-1000 solar flares. NASA with an ambitious 200 satellite constellation proposal to monitor for wildfire outbreaks. That's linked for you below. Next, we move to a very cool simulation of galaxy formation. Hubble has revealed that younger galaxies are much better at making stars and mass. Last but not least, revisiting the long-term topic of GMOs, the first animal product has been approved by the FDA. Don't think I'll be getting in line for that fish. Folks, Phoenix is a terrific place to be in January. The frontier of science is coming, and from what you guys said about our Pittsburgh conference in October, more unprecedented access to the speakers for questions and interaction. Observing the frontier. Link is found below and at suspiciousobservers.org. Earth's other tropical Earth spot of note is south of Mexico heading west, but the real story here is snow coming to the U.S. Hello, cold. Bienvenido a los Estados Unidos. Watch how the weather sticks to the convergence boundaries of the strongest lows in both Europe and down under, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.